What's good, what's good, what's good? It's your boy Joe's the kid. You already know the name. And now watching our TED Daily. It's lit. Been working, you know, working I did I dropped a homecoming EP. Uh right when I came back, uh, hence the name Homecoming. And then uh, last year I dropped uh, JDK nineteen, which is like JDK Day for Streets. You know, I'm no more coming home now, I'm around. And yeah man, you know, we're doing what we do. Feel me? Um, I feel like I don't know, man. For me, I've always like wanted to be a musician as opposed to a, being a rapper. I think that's always been my own goal. So, like, the moment I realized the distinction between a rapper and uh, somebody that makes jams, you know, I was like, all right, cool. I know what I want to do. Um, I remember the first chorus I did. It was awful, and I remember I was like, yo, man, I have to do this chorus so that you know I can start building on this, you know, and you know, yeah, man. I just. I don't know, it just came it just came naturally to me. Yeah, I knew that like visuals were needed, but it was just how to come about into how to find, you know, the positions that you've been that you find the video done because like bro, back then like even recording a song was like how are we even going to do this? Let alone thinking about how I'm not going to shoot a video. But I remember I shot my first video. Run this video. I can't remember who shot it. Shouts to you. Ah now my guy. Eh? You know it wasn't no no, no. Ah now my guy we shot it and we edited it in the same day in his apartment we literally just left the flat he was like bro let's just walk we enter one shopping mall started walking around looking at snapbacks recording the snapbacks and then i entered one telephone booth that was outside did superman come out start rapping. <laughs> and then we went back to the script and we edited the video and we dropped it but yeah man god god forgive me for not remembering what's the name but we will meet to go talk later I, I feel like I was already taking it seriously. I don't think Antijukwe changed anything in the way that I perceive things. Um, I was already taking it seriously. I was already working on, you know, trying to learn how to write better choruses and, you know, things of that sort. So, like, I met Quadratic around the same time. And, you know, we just made the jam. I remember when I made the jam, I was like, yo, bro, kind of got a jam that's nice. But, <laughs> but yeah, that was that was about it. And then you know we pushed it, and then we started performing it around. And I felt like okay, yeah, I'm a musician as of that point because I was basically going around England um, performing, which is like the first time. Yeah, I feel like for JDK19, it was it. I always I used to say that like it was a it was like a branding exercise for me as opposed to like as and as much as an album because um. I really wanted to explain who I am to people with the music, you know, that's why the title itself was even JDK, you know, saying JDK 19, this is my year to, you know, talk to you guys. And um, every single song for that reason meant something and, you know, we didn't want to just have people that, you know, they don't see the correlation, you know, why they don't, they don't see why this person is on the song or they don't even know that you guys are guys and all that kind of stuff. So we just wanted to create a great album and that's what we, you know, work towards. I want to say so. I want to say so. Yeah, I want to say balance is really big. Yeah, but the thing is, we didn't even think about it as a single one. We're putting it out. We just put it out because we like the song so much. And then you know, before we knew it, it was like, all right, mad. So let's drop the album now. Flossie came to the studio with Mark Blaze. That was the day I met Mark Blaze for the first time. And so um, Flossie came to the studio with him, and Budge was there. We started working on the song and. I was like, Flo, you have to do something on this song. And if you listen to that song, you see that what Flo did doesn't have any backups or anything because he literally did just one take. Yeah, um, and I feel like, man, as an artist that's like developing, you want to spend time developing like your own particular sound. You want to focus on that. And for that reason, you want to have a guy that's your producer, that's your guy, guy, guy. After like a year of searching, I found my boy, my please beats, the baddest producer out there. So yeah man, um, 2020 Jembe Boys are around, we don't know what Jembe Boys means, it means that we serve for good job there, I want to know I'm a Jembe, what are you saying there, what are you saying, we eat small there, <laughs> don't share anything near our side or around, don't let us even know you're sharing something because I want to know I'm a Jembe, we are Jembe Boys, that's, just, that's the mindset 2020. So just know that we're coming for the game. We're going to get our own cake. We're going to get a piece of the cake. So it is what it is. 
<laughs> same people man the gang the gang you see them i feel like anybody can be a jembe boy jembe boys jembe girls jembe fc that's the like before i write the song i write the chorus first and i feel like it's just it's just an active effort the day i learned that because i did architecture and i didn't i couldn't really draw in secondary school and one of my lecturers in school told me that you can learn how to draw and the moment i realized that like if you can learn how to draw you can learn how to sing it's just training and you know i just started like working at it working at it and working at understanding how people want to listen to stuff just it's just work man it's just work there's no other explanation just spending time on it writing choruses for fun and canceling them i feel like yeah man there's like a few guys that like that i think about as my let me see my peers when it comes to rap you know like black fresh um bloody po uh files you know them them guys that i feel like we have similar sounds um i just appreciate working with them i appreciate like you know listening to their stuff and seeing how they attack the same thing i would do because we oftentimes do the same instrumentals and um yeah man black bones is is a really great dude man we met each other on the chocolate city tour um and we've been guys since then man me i just wear my drag because i wear my drag it doesn't even have anything to do with my hair honestly yeah i want to say so i feel like um people were sort of rocking the drag like a few people were wearing the drag before i started wearing it but like when i started wearing it like i wanted it to be something that like i've always wanted to wear drags but i just never felt like it was the time and you know i was in london i was like all right man this is it let's just start this and i've just been expanding on it expanding on it the the drip is getting crazy so (laughs) yeah how many downloads you have (laughs) that's the most important question how many downloads you have i used to put my songs on the same size that everybody used to do um what's it called hog share media fire um what was that big one there was one that was like Lime Links. Ah, Lime Links is the one that Fresh used to. <laughs> to, to, to <laughs> Fresh is Lime Links to worry our lives. Let's just say it like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was how that was my my plan for releasing songs back then. Like, okay, we finished the jam. Put it on Lime Links. You know, made it on the refresh. <laughs> made it on the refresh up. You know what I'm JDK, Day for Streets, Josie. This year I might take off the kids. You never know, man. You know why? Because the kid is baby goat. I'm not the goat, so. <laughs> <laughs> I do you think I don't know. <laughs> Miscellaneous. M I S C A. Wrong. L L. Miscellaneous. L L. E O. U S. I know there's an edge, but don't know where it is, bro. Oh no. <laughs> Ask me, mass. I like mass. Mass is easy. Squares of sixty-nine times three. Squares of sixty-nine is what? The square root of 69 is 8 sum. I don't is is that an actual square root? 49 is the square root of 7. 8 is 64. Quick mess. So can I take it? Can I make a square root of 64 times 3 to 24? I'm on my mouse, smart mad or go okay. You're a smart motherfucker, that's right. I think I met Ice Prince through Dapo. Uh General Dapo. Shouts to him. Um he took me to his house probably and then uh Actually, what happened was before I was in Nigeria, that boy used to play my songs for Ice Prince a lot, and Ice Prince already knew me from that. So like when I came back to Nigeria and I linked up with him, it was like, uh, what's good, my G? I remember there was even one day that like I was telling him that like, bro, let me rap for you, and he was like, nah, man, no need for that one. I don't see Sabi rap. <laughs> I was like, ah, mad, mad, mad. And then yeah, man, we just became family. Super cool cast was family, you know. Um, everybody that was around was like my G, you know. That's why, uh, as soon as it was possible for my guy Yui to serve to enter Nigeria like this, and you know, he came 
that was the first place that we went to because we wanted to just go and you know link up with our guys that well, everybody was there ibb you know the whole gang um and then um i was a super cool cast i was a super cool cast i still say it in my songs you know um for for a period of time and then you know i started triple one records the label which is you know my own main thing that i you know look after now it's my baby but um i met him i around the same time uh he he i think he came to the studio once and then i went to his house we started frequenting his house off you know with uh ua and then you know one day he was just like man he's working on this album and um he wants to put us on it so like he said he gave two of us different jams and that was mad so he came to the studio he dropped the jams for us and i told him i'll give you back this song the same day you give it to me i guarantee you that he didn't expect it and i gave you back that same day but yeah man uh so when i used to live in nottingham i used to have an apartment that was like the cribble and it was you know called triple one it was what the house number was triple one you know, we had like a whole family of people that used to come there and that used to like congregate there. So, you know, when I wanted to start my record label, the majority of the people that work with me right now are people that lived in that house or like, you know, that were around that time and, you know, that were already Triple One family from then. So, you know, we just made that the name of the label. When I made my studio, I, I didn't I didn't want to make it a public studio at first, but then thinking about it later, I was like, okay, cool, it's not, it's not a bad idea. But then the main thing for me, and I feel like the thing that drives me the most is like, I like watching people create stuff and I like seeing anything that's like close to perfection you know that process of what can we change you know what can we do and especially when I you know like the person that is working in the studio is you know it's always great to like be like yo can we try it like this can we try it like that and you know I learned I learned a lot from different people that come to the studio you know fresh night fresh comes to the studio now fresh finish one verse in five minutes like bro I beg it's hilarious <laughs> but yeah man i learned i learned how to be a liar from you as well when it comes to the studio you know i learned how to be diligent you know from ua i learned from my police my producer you know everybody that comes around me has something to offer and you know i feel like the studio helps me bring those people closer i remember i was talking to somebody that day and i was like yo um what's it called that uh, did you go to skepta show yesterday and she was saying uh oh yeah she did and i was just joking that like did you say I had a skeptical for me? <laughs> and then next day I got a phone call that your skeptical has come to your side. <laughs> I think it was fresh that called me. <laughs> so you do that fresh that skeptical has come to your side. I was like, what? I just gingerly carried my tears. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't even tell anybody. <laughs> I fit in and then I called. I called one of my guys. I was like, yo, man, I gotta do this. <laughs> and then I went and it was chill, man. I recorded him, you know, on the album that he just dropped. I uh, played him a bunch of my stuff. It was, a, it was a great experience and it was good to know that you know you with what you heard i support everybody same way i'm part of Ote daily same way i'm part of drb same way i'm part of uh you know clc same way i'm 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 just here man i'm a man for the people you know what it is i'm part of the chocolate city and i'm a super cool cat i got love man i have a lot of affiliations like but i'm I'm still like Joe's on his own at the end of the day. So, like recently, I've been having a lot of conversations with people telling me I'm an hotel guy. And I'm like, me myself, I don't know if I'm an hotel guy, but I know a lot of my friends are hotel. And so I run in hotel circles. So I guess you can say I'm an hotel guy for that reason. Yeah, yeah exactly. Much. The Alternative Network.